Hi, and welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we will be considering a special case of two-dimensional motion called projectile motion, which deals with how objects move through the air after they're launched or projected. So projectile motion, as I mentioned, is a special type of two-dimensional motion, and we're going to look into this into more detail in the following couple of minutes. So basically, we have something that we call a projectile, which is a particle or a particle-like object that is projected or launched. And this is a special case because the particle moves in a vertical plane, with some initial velocity vector, but its acceleration is always the freefall acceleration g, which is downward. And this projectile could be anything like a tennis ball or a baseball in flight. And for projectile motion, we always use the assumption that the air has no effect on the projectile's motion. What this means is that basically we don't consider any side effects that air would have, like air friction or drag, which would slow down our particle in the air. So we don't consider any of that when we study projectile motion. So the projectile is launched with some initial velocity vector, which can be broken down into its component, Vx initial and Vy initial. And basically this knot here, this knot symbol here, just indicates to us that it's the initial velocity because it's important that we keep track of what our velocities are through projectile motion, whether it's our final velocity or our initial velocity. And if you're confused about vectors and how to break them down into components, then you can watch some of our previous videos which have gone into vectors in a lot more detail. And now these components, the initial in the x and the initial in the y directions can be found simply by knowing the angle theta naught between the velocity vector and the positive x direction. So basically, let's say this is the ground and this was our initial velocity vector, so v naught with an arrow over it. And this will, the, the ground will indicate our positive x direction, and theta naught will simply be the angle between the velocity vector and that positive x direction. And during its two-dimensional motion, um, the projectile's position vector r and velocity vector will change continuously, but its acceleration a or g is constant and will always be directed vertically downward. So this will always be g. And so basically going back to our initial velocity, we can find the components vx and vy using these two equations. And let's see how and why we can do that. So basically, let's break this down again. So we have our velocity vector v naught here again, with our angle theta naught between the positive x direction, which we'll define as this way. And if we remember, we can take the vector as the hypotenuse of a triangle, for example. And this will be Vy, and this will be Vx, right? So Vy will be V naught sine theta naught, if we remember our trigonometry. And Vx will be V naught cos theta naught. If you need a refresher on trigonometry, you can go search these trigonometric identities up and you can find them anywhere really. But this is simply how we find the x and y components. So in analyzing projectile motion, we're able to break the motion down into its horizontal and vertical components, which is why I call this a special case of 2D motion because it's very nice and easy to work with. We are able to simplify down the motion into its horizontal and vertical components because they are independent of each other, which means that um, the motion in the horizontal direction does not affect the motion in the vertical direction. And what makes it so great is that the acceleration in the horizontal direction is always equal to zero. 
So ax is always equal to zero. And why is that? This is because in the x direction, there is no force. When I take this point object that's falling, for example, the only force acting on it is the force of gravity directed downward. And as we know, F equals MA, right? So basically, we can see that if we're only given the free fall acceleration G, that means the only acceleration is in the vertical direction. There's no force in the positive direction, right? I mean, not positive, the horizontal direction, right? So there's no force in the horizontal direction, which means that it's experiencing no acceleration in the horizontal direction. Now, if you're not familiar with forces, don't worry, we'll be going them over them into a lot more detail in some future videos. But for now, just know that there is no acceleration in the horizontal direction when we're talking about projectile motion or free fall. So what this allows us to do is that this allows us to write the projectile's horizontal displacement from an initial position x naught. So because acceleration is equal to zero, we can look back at some of our big five equations that we talked about in the last video, which basically says that um, delta x, which equals v naught times t plus one half a times t squared. And if the horizontal acceleration is zero, this entire part of the equation just becomes zero, which tells us that delta x simply equals the v initial times t. And because we know that v initial in the x direction equals v initial times cos of theta initial, we can go ahead and plug that in to get this equation for our horizontal displacement. Now, Vertical motion is the motion we discussed for a particle in free fall. So that means the most important value, which is the acceleration, is constant. So that means we can apply the big five equations that we learned in the last video and simply substitute negative g for a and switch to y notation. Then, for example, we get all three of these equations, which are very important equations when we are working with free fall and projectile motion. So basically here, for example, let's go through some of these equations. So in this first equation, we have the change in height, right? So unlike delta x, we're now working with delta y which is the change in the height, let's look at this example for a moment, of the projectile. So let's say that we're taking this to be y equals zero. Let's just pick this point because it makes our math a lot easier. And so y not equals zero. And here y is equal to some maximum height h. And using the big five equation, we can substitute v not sine theta naught for vy, which we talked about in just the previous slide. And this is very similar to how we found the horizontal displacement. And now we can find the maximum height that it reaches. And you can go ahead and do that for all the other equations. And we'll be looking into some practice problems in future videos to help you apply these equations to projectile motion problems. So we were talking about trajectory, but what really is that? Trajectory is basically the projectile's path, and we can find the equation of the projectile's path by eliminating certain variables and finding the change in um, x and the change in y. So for example, so solving equation for the um, horizontal displacement that we found in the previous slide, we found that x minus x naught equals v naught cos theta naught times t, right? So basically, we can rearrange that. So we know that delta y, delta y equals v naught y t minus one half g t squared which equals v naught sine theta naught of t, remembering how we derived that on the earlier slide, minus 1 half gt squared. 
Now we can rewrite this as delta x. And basically what that allows us to say is that delta y. So what does that tell us, right? So here we know that t equals delta x over v naught cos theta naught, right? That's just some simple algebra. So if we go ahead and plug that into the equation we got for delta y, we get delta y equals v naught sine theta naught times t that we found, which is delta x over v naught cos theta naught, right? And then we subtract the free fall acceleration times t squared. Again, we can plug delta x over v naught cos theta naught into the equation and square that. And after simplifying, we get the equation for the trajectory, which is basically tan of theta naught times x minus gx squared over 2v naught cos theta naught squared. And basically we get tan here because of sine theta over v naught cos theta, which this is just some simple um, trig. If you're struggling with trig, I recommend you go back and study that a little bit more because it is very important once we get into 2D and 3D motion. Now, we can use this, the same approach or a similar approach to find the horizontal range of a projectile. The range R of a projectile is basically the horizontal distance it travels when it returns to its initial height. So basically, if we have a projectile that looks like this, so here it returns to its initial height, right? So this distance we call R, the range. So to find range, let us use the equation that we had before. So let's call r equal to x minus x naught, which we know is equal to v naught cos theta naught times t. And we also know that delta y, which equals 0, because it returns to its initial height. So that means we can set 0 equal to the other handy equation that we found earlier. And this allows us to eliminate t between these two equations because we can just use this equation to find that t, which equals this, right? Let's just do some algebra there. Okay, so basically this allows us to say that r equals 2 v naught squared divided by g times sine of theta naught cos of theta naught. And this requires some knowledge of trig identities again. This simply just becomes v naught squared divided by g. That's the same. However, 2 sine theta cos theta can be simplified to sine of 2 theta. So that is what we get for the equation for a horizontal range of a projectile. And looking at this, we know that sine of theta reaches a max when theta equals 90 degrees, right? Because sine of 90 degrees equals 1. And this means that sine of 2 times 45 degrees equals 1, which is the max. So this means, which is a very important thing to remember, a projectile will reach its horizontal range r at a launch angle of 45 degrees. It will reach its maximum range r at a launch angle of 45 degrees when it returns to the initial height that it was launched at. Okay, so that was it for projectile motion, a very important part, one of my favorite parts of physics too. So I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something new today. If so, please leave a comment, like, share, get this out to all your physics enthusiast friends out there, and I hope to see you next time.